I was wearing three-piece suits and ties and conforming like everybody else. And then on the 1st of November 1967, I still remember the date because that's when I started wearing everything else. And I started wearing these, what you call kurta pajamas in India. And I went to the village for the first time digging and blasting wells. So for five years I would go down a, a well which would be 100 feet below the ground. I would uh, drill and blast with um, jackhammers that you break the streets with, you know those things. Make a hole in the well and then put explosives and come out and start deepening wells for drinking water. So for five years I did only that. Well, I was drilling and blasting wells and it so happened that one of the drillers who taught me how to drill and blast came from a village called Thelonia and he said, would well, you like to come to my village? I said, no, not really interested. But he sort of kept persuading me and then finally I went. Stayed there 35 years. Well, I found living and working with these very, very poor and ordinary people an exhilarating experience because they had such knowledge and skills incredible knowledge and skills which has just not been identified, recognized by development planners and so-called experts in the development field. And I felt that being exposed to that sort of knowledge and skill, I would like to start a college built by the poor for the poor only. And the Barefoot College is supposed to be a college only for the poor. And only if you are really poor and living below the poverty line and living on less than one dollar a day, are you really allowed to come to the college. The first thing the rural poor told me was that they mistrusted any person with a degree and qualification. Anyone with a paper qualification and degree they suspected immediately because they symbolized tyranny, they symbolized exploitation, they symbolized discrimination. So only the people who have the written word were the people who tyrannize the poor. But anyone comes flaunting a degree at me, I will say, you're disqualified, brother. There's another place for you. Because you haven't proved your worth. So what if you got a degree? It doesn't mean a thing to me. It doesn't even mean a thing to the poor community at large. Forget others. I mean, you might get a job in the World Bank, so what? But not here. So the Barefoot College will never have anyone with a paper qualification. Anyone who is marginalized, who is a dropout or a cop-out or a washout in rural society is eligible to join the college. And these are the people we train to be doctors, teachers, engineers in the college itself. I've never, and the Barefoot College has actually demonstrated that illiteracy is not a barrier to people developing themselves. It should not be, and people are looking at it just because someone is illiterate, man or woman, that doesn't mean he or she cannot contribute to her own society, to her own community. And the Barefoot College has amply demonstrated that. And we felt that such people who have really been marginalized and been not really gone into mainstream at all in any capacity whatsoever, should be able, should be given an opportunity and some space, mental and physical space, to be able to show what they could do with the extraordinary skills they have. And that opportunity and space the Barefoot College provides to the rural poor, not only in India, but outside too. For the first time in the history of Afghanistan, we've taken women from Afghanistan, wearing burqas and everything and train them to be solar engineers and they've gone back and actually right now solar electrified five villages in Afghanistan much to the absolute amazement of anybody around and if someone can do that if I can pick up anyone from any part of the world and in six months whether she knows the language whether there's no culture problem no language problem no there's no problem at all it's only a problem of our mind not their mind so we can guarantee that anyone from any part of the world, we can in six months make into a barefoot solar engineer and solar electrify their own village when they go back home. We teach them about how to make a charge controller, how to make an inverter, how to test electronic equipment without any solar engineer involved. 
So it's medicine, it's teaching, barefoot teachers, barefoot water engineers, barefoot solar engineers, barefoot communicators. We, what we have managed to convey to the world outside is that anyone who's poor, marginalized, can develop, can acquire a skill, technical skill, which is very sophisticated, and help their own community. So this is actually what is Mahatma Gandhi's message. Self-contained, self-sufficient villages where you don't depend on any expertise from outside. We think that you should prepare the community first before you introduce any technology. So the whole barefoot approach of demystifying technology and decentralizing the management, control and ownership of this technology is the part that is unique about the barefoot approach. And we feel that this is replicable anywhere in the world. And we pick up people who are from very remote villages in other parts of India and bring them to the Barefoot College for six months or a year and help them set up Barefoot Colleges in other parts of India. So we have about 20 Barefoot Colleges in 13 states of India. And these states have to be remote, have to be backward, have to be inaccessible, and you can't set up a Barefoot College in a, in a town. The criteria is it has to be in a remote, inaccessible, back, one of the very ordinary villages that you have. And that's how it's worked so far. We have them in 13 states in 20 barefoot colleges. And uh, the condition also is that within two years, you have to register yourself, you have to have your own registration, your own legal identity, you have to have your own board, and you have to have nothing to do with Bunker Royal. It's all providing basic minimum needs, nothing very extravagant. Food, health, education, drinking water, fuel, fodder, employment. These are basic minimum needs anywhere in India and indeed all over the world where they're remote. So if you can concentrate on providing services on, in these areas and build up, and not really capacity building as much as confidence building of people to be able to do it themselves, then that's what, that's what we think is the ultimate. I think some innovations get destroyed if there's too much money. So we are very careful about how much money we take into Thelonia. I'm sure if I tried, I could triple my budget. But it's also true that if you do more work with less money, you're really proving a point for replication otherwhere. Because the first thing people say though, but you have so much money, anyone can do it with so much money. I said, can you do it with less money and do much more? And that's where the barefoot approach has, made a, has given a universal message here. We have solar electrified five villages in the whole of Afghanistan, the first time ever. The money it took to select 10 trainees, three of them women, bring them to Thelonia, airfare, train them for six months, purchase the equipment for about 150 houses, insure them, transport them, and take them back to Afghanistan and install them and actually show that it has been done. It's the same amount of money the UN spends on one consultant for one year in Kabul. How about that? That should shame them. Smaller is beautiful, small solutions, inexpensive solutions, where it's community managed, community controlled and community owned. This is the most important thing. How do you decentralize that to the community level? And this is a universal message of Mahatma Gandhi, which unfortunately we've forgotten in our own country. In India, forget abroad, but it's a universal message that uh, Mahatma Gandhi gave us. The earth is enough for every man's need, but not for one man's greed. That's what he said, which is true. For me, give me any day, anyone who's got practical knowledge, I'll give him the respect he deserves.